Good morning and welcome to the Halloween Market Cast. Um, a quick comment about the shirt. I felt I should dress down a little uh, this year after last year's Halloween Market Cast shirt really did cause some, uh, some reaction right across all of our viewers. Uh, so here it is. This is the one uh, and there are some scary things in here. So this is a trigger warning for anybody that gets a little bit upset with bad news. Well, there is one or two, there are one or two things in here that we should warn you about, give you a full on Halloween warning, worse than this shirt. Uh, with no further ado, because we've only got 30 minutes this morning, uh, let's get straight into it. Um, everybody is aware right now of the way that prices are moving. Uh, the, the, the reference that I use for prices, as you well know, is the nationwide index and of course, the October Nationwide Index comes out today. Uh, it'll come out probably while I'm in the middle of doing this presentation. Um, and uh, so I don't know what those numbers are gonna be, uh, but I've, I've got my forecast in here and I've got my guess. But the crucial thing is that we all know what the reality is out there right now and numbers are gently tumbling. My uh, message this morning is that that is a secondary consideration Right now, what's most important are volumes, are the numbers, are the amount of reservations, the amount of sales that are going through on a monthly basis. That for me is key during this market cast and that is what I want to focus on. But to set the scene, let's have a little look here. As you know, inflation stuck in September. We've got the new inflation numbers coming out later in the month and we'll come back to that in a moment. But inflation stuck in September at 6.7%. And for the last MPC meeting, uh, those interest rates were held at five and a quarter percent. We've got another MPC meeting coming up on Thursday. That's gonna be really important for us when it comes to consumer confidence, as we'll see. Right move edged up, <laughs> asking prices edged up again in October, 0.4%. I have to tell you though, that normally September into October, uh, the average number is around one and a half, 1.4%, I think. So it was well below average, but it is extraordinary, isn't it? That against this backdrop of what are clearly falling prices, asking prices are still edging up, but it's the truth. Nationwide, as I say, currently at minus 5.3%, new numbers out today. But the real big headline on this first slide is mortgage approvals are continuing to fall. And the mortgage approvals in August are the lowest since January. And we all know how difficult the back end of 2022 and the first quarter of 2023 were. And those numbers are back down there under 45,000 for the August number, which suggests on normal computation that we'll see completions in November, December at only around 70,000 well below the average of 100,000 completions in a calendar month. That's where our issues sit. But hey, let's make it easy. I am going to sum this current market up in three words, three words. Here's the first, apprehension. This is what's currently going on. We've got people sitting on their hands. They're worried, they're worried, they're worried on two counts. Obviously there's affordability. Uh, as interest rates have continued to climb, it means their buying power continues to fall. So that's, that's a major issue. But also apprehension that they might miss out or that they might do the wrong sort of deal. If, if people feel prices are falling, they tend to hang on, which is an extraordinary thing really when you're talking about your own personal life. I spoke to uh, a bunch of people just last week on this very subject that why on earth the British public actually adopt their position on buying or selling a house like it was a gamble on equities or even a horse race. This is all about living their life. And the fact of the matter is that unless you are selling your very last house, or I suppose to be fair, buying your very first house, everything equals itself out anyway, because you're buying and you're selling and the market moves as one. And of course, if you're trading up, there's no better time to trade up than in a bad market. But the apprehension is clearly out there. Uh, it's clear to see, as a classic example, these mortgage approval numbers, look at this in August, 42,000, 43,000 mortgage approvals in August. This is miles below the normal average, which is between 60 and 65,000 at this time of the year in a month. You can see how it's dipped down here. Uh, and, and you look at the average that runs from 2014 through to 2019, those five really steady years before COVID, and you can see where we were. It's almost a dead straight line 
We obviously had our huge COVID drop and then our huge spring out of the traps when the lockdown ended uh, early in 2021, massive 2021, and it's been falling since. And here we are down here now, sitting at under 50,000 a month mortgage approvals. This is the concern, and that is proof positive that there is this apprehension out there. There, there, are, there are people have a need, this needs-based market. People have a need to move, but they are just waiting. It's almost like a holding their breath and waiting. The second word, optimism. There is undoubtedly optimism out there. There's no question about that. And we, we see it in the recovery in consumer confidence, although that's taken a knock this month. I'll come back to that. But we see the optimism out there writ large. And it doesn't matter. I mean, with one or two dissenting voices, to be fair, it's quite interesting. I look at what other market commentators have to say. And the gulf between where people think the market's going to go next is huge. It doesn't matter whether you are a Russell Quirk who famously thinks everything's going to be wonderful, whatever happens, or you're a moving home with Charlie who equally famously think everything is going to hell in a handcart, whatever happens. And there's no gain gainsaying either of them. But the difference between the two is massive. It's like 30 odd percent. So, you know, you, you pick which one you actually want to go with. But it is undoubted that there is an optimism in the market which runs alongside the, uh, that, that apprehension. And again, here's proof positive. Look at this. So this is the right move. Uh, October index blipping up by 0.5%. Who'd have thunk it? But it's true. What it does mean, though, is that the annual asking price is 0.8%. Uh, minus 0.8%, so just falling off those asking prices, showing that there is an element of common sense coming into it. And interestingly, in last month's Zoopla report, uh, there was a classic piece, a classic paragraph in that report, which highlighted how important the first asking price was. Uh, when, when a new property goes online, setting that initial asking price is crucial to the chances of success and a fast sale. Reducing an asking price later actually reduces the opportunity or reduces the possibility of, of selling quickly. Uh, developers, please take note. So asking prices really do matter, but this shows um, the, the, the optimism that is undoubtedly out there. And my third word for summing up the market, resilience. The market is incredibly resilient in terms of prices, the, the, some of the forecasts that were actually published in national newspapers like The Telegraph and The Mail during last year, and I remember sticking them up on this screen in this presentation about uh, plummeting prices and plunging prices and house price crashes, the famous Daily Telegraph illustration, which had a house literally, literally falling off a cliff. Uh, they've all been proven absolutely wrong so far. And, and, and I, I, I threw the so far in there, but I believe that that is actually going to continue. So we have seen a reduction in prices, but it's a gentle reduction in prices. And it seems that sellers have not been shaken by the falling volumes, the falling numbers of sales. They've held on that optimism that I was talking about. They've held on to their asking prices. And it shows that there is a resilience out there that's unquestioned for me. Here's the proof, this resilience. These are yesterday's Zoopla numbers just came out. Um, and you can see then that the current UK house price year on year is at minus 1.1%. But why I thought it was worth putting this particular uh, slide up on the screen is that they've also on their headline page, Zoopla, when they published their numbers yesterday, put their forecast in for next year. And you can see that next year, Zoopla believe we are going to see just a very small fall um, across next year, which I have to say mirrors exactly what I believe is going to happen too. Uh, they're seeing that we're going to see about minus 2% next year. And they're seeing next year as well that we're going to see about a million transactions. I think that that's a really good forecast. And I've got to say that matches pretty much my expectations too. What that doesn't do, and what I think is particularly important to this audience, is talk about what the share of new homes is uh, in that 1 million. And I think that's a major issue for us. 
to get the sort of volumes that the new homes industry is looking for, if we're talking about a million sales in total, it means that the market share has to be up close to 13% for us to see volumes maintained. And I believe, well, at the moment, I know it's lower than that. And I believe there is every, uh, there's every possibility that it'll be lower still next year because we still need to bring asking prices in line with market expectations. Nationwide is due out today, but this is, so this is last month, but you can see it stuck last month at minus 5.3%. Uh, those of you who watch MarketCast on a regular basis will know that I forecast a slight uptick last month. I didn't get it, but at least it didn't move uh, any further backwards. It will be very interesting to see where that uh, index is today, but it's much less about prices right now. And don't forget, of course, these are mortgage approval prices here on Nationwide, which means these are deals done a while ago. So whenever you're looking at the Nationwide numbers, you're looking at a bit of a snapshot going back in time, much less important to all of the sales directors who are actually sitting in their offices or sitting at home on a Sunday evening, uh, looking for those extra and additional reservations to meet forecast. But as a background and to give us a trend, it's a really important and reliable index. I thought it was worth talking about this particular number. Uh, you'll know that I have only recently, in the last six months, started putting price to earnings ratio back into this deck because I think it's a really great indicator about where price is going to move. And we know, don't we, that the long run average is just over four and a half times earnings. So the average price is just over four and a half times average earnings. If we took that back, right back to the early 80s when this index first started. That's what we would see. And eventually, this line, which moves above and below that index line, eventually it will come back to meet this line. It is almost like the laws of gravity, like night follows day, it will come back and meet that line. So we know that as prices fall and wages go up, and don't forget that wages at the moment are running ahead of inflation. As those two things happen, this inevitably comes back down to this line. But in this month's Zoopla report, uh, they put in a genius chart, which I have stolen from Richard Donnell, and I have stuck in here, because I think this is a really great way of demonstrating um, exactly what I mean by that. So what Zoopla have done is that they've actually uh, pasted in here, on this axis here, average mortgage rates, and then on this axis here, the price to income ratio, and this beautifully demonstrates that these two things uh, uh, move in relation to each other. And as interest rates fall, then the price to incomes ratio rises. Uh, it's a fabulous demonstration of that. I would just point out one or two really key things. Number one, there is a delay. There is a delay. It's inevitable, isn't there? That, that particularly now in the days of uh, fixed rate mortgages, over terms two, three, four, and five years, uh, there's bound to be a delay. So there's an inevitable delay in there. And of course, this can also be affected by other things, by short-term things, whether that's COVID or whether that's a stamp duty incentive or whatever that might be. But generally, here's how the two move. So as this one comes back up again, so this one will come back down again. And you know, these lines will inevitably cross at some point as well. So this is where we're headed. We're headed to this new realism. We're headed to a situation where the uh, loan to income ratios are gonna come back down again to meet as these interest rates stay steady in the new normal, which is around 5%. And I can't see, I, I struggle to see, certainly over the next 12 months, any rates much lower than that. And so we have this new normal going on. So it, it, it's an extraordinary thing. And that's a great chart that demonstrates how that, that works and gives us a really good indication of how prices are gonna move if we can get a handle on the way that interest rates are going to move. Key events coming up soon then, of course, we've got Thursday, we've got the MPC meeting. Uh, this is gonna be enormous for us and enormous in, in how it affects consumer confidence. The smart money right now is that they will hold interest rates at five and a quarter percent. That's what I believe that they will do. I think it would be extraordinary if they cut interest rates. That would be, you know, a, a, a signal would be all wrong particularly against a geopolitical uh, backdrop of absolute turmoil. So it would be most unlikely to see them fall. I think the most likely thing is that we will see them held. Then we've got the inflation number that comes out on November the 15th. 
Uh, that's really important for us too. It would be great if we saw uh, another little kick down in inflation uh, in the November numbers. It would make such a difference to confidence and such a difference to the view on where interest rates go next. And then crucially, we've got another uh, non-budget. We had the uh, mini budget, didn't we? Uh, last September, it was the mini budget that wasn't a budget. And then in the November, of course, when Jeremy Hunt arrived, we had the autumn statement that also wasn't a budget. Uh, and then coming up on November the 22nd, we've got Jeremy Hunt's second autumn statement, which also isn't a budget. So all of these things that aren't budgets, but do affect what people earn, their tax breaks and so on, and will all feed through into consumer confidence as we well know, and which brings me very nicely onto it. And I have to say, this has been one of the most disappointing pieces of data that I've looked at this month. Um, we had a situation where, again, those of you that have watched this market cast before will know how important these consumer confidence numbers are because of the absolute indication, reliable indication they give us on the way that the market is going to move in the short to mid term. And we'd seen people's confidence in their own personal finance coming back and almost touching the zero, the neutral line. In other words, you had about a 50-50 split between people who believed their finances were gonna get better over the next 12 months and those who believed that they were gonna get worse over the next 12 months. We'd come back, back here in June, we'd got almost up to neutral, a little bit of a fall away in July with bad inflation numbers and another significant rise in interest rates, but it had come back again. And September, it had almost reached neutral, but right across the board, right across the board, all the indicators took a sharp dip down in October. Now this data was collected shortly after the troubles began uh, in the Middle East, and there is no question that that will have affected the way people think. Uh, and, and I think that that will have had, that would have fought, fed through certainly into these numbers. Some of the really worrying aspects in here, those of you who follow, follow market cast will know, but for those who don't, the red line on here is the overall confidence index, the measure across all questions. The green line here is the next 12 months, a good time or a bad time to make a major purchase. Uh, and you can see that took a really sharp fall into negative. Again, that comes back to that apprehension. You know, when I painted the three words that best describe this market right now, I kicked off with apprehension and there it is writ large. There's, you know, people are very apprehensive about committing or making a move right now. And that got considerably worse as we came into the autumn. And here, the blue line at the base there, how do you feel that the UK economy is gonna do over the next 12 months? Is it gonna get better or is it gonna get worse? And you can see that also dipped sharply away, almost to the extent where it made me rethink my thoughts about this last quarter and quarter one next year. But I tend to think, you know, I sat down, had a really good think about this. And my take on this is that it is probably more of a blip than a move down into a negative trend. Uh, and I think that we'll see a recovery from those numbers when the November confidence numbers are collected. We'll see. I've left my final quarter uh, and my 2023 forecast exactly where they were, um, despite looking at these numbers, but they did give me cause for concern. And again, it stresses the need for, uh, for, for those looking for uh, volume, for those looking for sales before the end of the calendar year, the need to be aggressive in terms of the deals that are set in front of your prospects. Inflation, as we know, is a huge part in all this. It has such a massive effect in terms of where the Treasury set their interest rate rates or MPC sets the interest rates. And you can see that it froze at 6.7. So the CPI was 6.7%. Um, back in August, and it was 6.7 again in September. And we will see when the numbers come out later this month on the 15th, where that sits now, hopefully downwards, hopefully downwards. And I think that will feed into all of the data that is worrying me so much at the moment and see a, 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 an improvement accordingly. And of course, interest rates and mortgage rates are massive in terms of their effect on the market. And we can see here this chart over on the left hand side here is on a two year fixed rate and the different colors are the different loans to value with obviously the highest one 95% loan to value at the top 
and the, the lowest one, the 60% at the bottom. And but you've got a range there on a two year fixed right now. You've got a range there that sits between six and a half roughly and five and a half percent. But here's an interesting thing. I had a telephone conversation a couple of weeks ago with a very good mate of mine, a guy called Adam Champion, who works for New Homes Mortgage Helpline. A uh, really well-informed guy uh, and, and in a business that is one of, your, one of the big mortgage arrangers in the UK. And he told me that people that actually registered with them inquiring about mortgages six and seven months ago, before the, you know, the really strong uh, uh, round of interest rate rises that took us from probably around 2% up to 4, 5 and 5, 5 and a quarter percent that had gone quiet are now suddenly starting to warm up again and people are ringing up saying I came on to you for a mortgage back in uh, February, back in April. Uh, we've decided now that we want to go ahead. Uh, can we get that moving again? It's a really interesting fact and, and I think that one of the things that suggests to me is that for those of you sat on data that you've maybe discounted because it's six or seven months old, you're wrong because, because people, back to the apprehension slide, people have been sitting on their hands, but in the end, those people that were going to move are going to move. It might mean that they've got to adjust their sights in terms of what they buy, where it is, the size that it is, but those inquiries are still very much alive right now. And, and I think, Adam's words on that really did get me thinking about how you could actually reinvigorate data that's been sat in a database for a few months. It's still very much alive. Uh, over on this right hand chart here, that, so that's two year fixed at different loans to value. This is a 75% loan to value at different terms. It's a different fixed terms, you know, with the, the cheapest money at the top being the five year money, uh, sorry, the cheapest money at the bottom rather being the five and 10 year money here, which means that the markets feel that rates are moving in a downward direction. Uh, but I don't think they're going, <laughs> they're not plunging or plummeting anytime soon. I think that whatever happens through next year, I, I would be amazed if we see a rate below 4% right through the next uh, calendar year. Looking at the Halifax um, index stats, well, this is their September numbers. And you can see there that monthly change pretty much reflected absolutely everything that's going on there, whether it's nationwide or it's Zoopla, whether it's right move, all of those key indices are saying pretty much the same thing. Uh, and you can see that as far as Halifax is concerned, they've got their annual change in as at the end of September at minus 4.7. And as you know, nationwide minus 5.3, there's nothing to choose between them. And they are undoubtedly an accurate reflection of where we really are. So we've seen around 5% backward movement in prices in the 12 months to, to the autumn. Nowhere near the 30% many uh, of the doomsayers predicted, but still very difficult. I characterize this, I just remind you, the characterization of this is if you're going along in a car, drinking a cup of coffee at 70 miles an hour, on the motorway and suddenly somebody pulls out in front of you or slams their brakes on and you slam your brakes on too. You're still going at 30 miles an hour because you only slowed down to 30, but my word, the coffee spills, doesn't it? You know, the fact that you're still moving forward, uh, it's still that, that deceleration really hurts and that is what is hurting the industry right now. It's a deceleration in prices. I've put two slides or two charts in the deck, two slides on the deck from the RICS, um, just to keep us sort of, you know, just to remind us that there are some uh, real pessimists out there right now. Uh, these are their national price expectations. But what's interesting is although they are still the balance of uh, surveyors, agents and surveyors surveyed in the September survey was still very much that prices are going more thought down than up. You can see in the 12 months numbers, which is the dotted line there, the, um, the, 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 the aqua colored dotted line, real recovery there, real recovery. I think that they are, even the surveyors and the agents, even they believe that we are seeing this market bottom out. So it's difficult, but it is, they, they see that looking forward over a 12 month period that it's bottoming out. If you're looking over the next three months, well, yeah, that's a bleak picture. Northern Ireland aside, in every region of the UK, the majority of the agents believe that prices are going to move south over the next three months. But again, look at the floating diamonds here. 
which are the three month average diamonds. And all of those are floating away, which means that it's an improving picture. Even the, the surveyors believe that. Um, I don't want to sort of sound too Pollyanna-ish with this, but even the surveyors believe that. In terms of volumes and sales, uh, that's popped into positive on a national basis over the next 12 months. The agents actually are seeing a positive move uh, in terms of volumes over the next 12 months. Again, over the next three months, it's very much in the negative, but you've still got floating diamonds. I take both of these things in my optimistic fashion as a slightly improving trend. So we've got three or four minutes left to actually explore what's gonna happen next. And well, let's do that. This is my market factor um, matrix. All of the things that I believe have the most significant effect on the way the market's gonna move. That's the one that I showed you in Market Cast 14 last month. Uh, and this is where that has transitioned to. And you can see there now, this hot employment market that has played such a big part. Uh, don't forget, if we went back all the way back to 2021, that thing was like over here and it has been moving back and been moving down ever since that time as it's played a, a, uh, a less and lesser part in fueling the volumes in the market. Uh, the employment market is definitely cooling. Everyone will be aware of that. You don't need to see any data to know. You can feel it, can't you? It's a visceral thing. Uh, so the employment market is cooling and it's moving back. It's having a lower impact. And don't forget, the employment market can move into negative. If we actually get that, uh, that employment market getting worse, then people actually start to worry about their employment prospects. And that, that, uh, that factor, which has been right up here over the last 18 months, which has moved back to here, can actually move into negative and can move into negative and come this way. And that obviously really does have a very bad effect on the market indeed. At the moment, it sits about there. Low supply, high demand again is shifted back and has shifted down. The little one that you can see sort of blocked out there were those, that stamp duty change that the Chancellor postponed. People have forgotten about that a bit now and it sort of sits down here. Mortgage availability, remortgage availability is tricky, but mortgage availability generally I think is not an issue for new purchasers. What is interesting by the way, is one of the reasons why we've seen this resilience in the market is because there haven't been a huge number of repossessions. And that is because of the stress testing that went in from 2012 onwards, when the, uh, when the lenders actually were stress testing mortgages up to a 7%, even though mortgages were available at two, three and 4% back then, you know, they stress tested up to 7%, which has, uh, has been a really good call. Right now, with mortgage rates at five, six, and six and a half percent, they are stress testing up to nine percent. So that is making mortgages more difficult to get. The mortgages are available and out there. It's just tougher. It's just tougher to prove affordability. So that's important. Consumer confidence now has moved back into the negative. So that's moved from this position here, central, back into negative. I hope that's just a blip. Big time in our positive here is what the developers can actually do. Discounts really up there uh, and, and the way those discounts are applied and the way they're offered to prospective purchasers is really, really important. Part exchange at the moment is playing a huge part uh, and it's a great way uh, to make a non-controversial, uh, non if you like, a, a, you know, a, a much uh, sweeter looking uh, deal appeal. It's a way to apply a, a, a discount, it, 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 you know, it, it, in, a, in, in other words, financial products and good smart uh, IFAs, such an important part of this market right now, you know, in the, in the age of help to buy gone, first time buyers are still a huge part of this market. They are still the largest buying group. You've got first time buyers right up there and you've also got cash buyers right up there. We've got to make sure and we get creative, as the house building industry has got to get creative uh, over finding ways to make deals work for struggling first time buyers. And right down here in the highest impact negative effect, low affordability and high mortgage rates. Here's a thing for uh, financial advisors uh, and for developers looking to package up deals and stuff. If we have got this apprehension, which I am absolutely certain that we have out there right now, Fixed mortgages, arranging fixed mortgages 
subsidizing a mortgage for a fixed period over two, maybe even three years, that could well be the thing that gives your prospect the confidence to make a move. So where do prices go next then? Very briefly, uh, we've got the October numbers due out today. I believe they're gonna show about minus 3%, somewhere around there. I believe that the nationwide is gonna end the year at about minus 5%. No change there from what I showed you last month. But this is the number that probably worries me more than any other. This is the difference in price between the average second-hand home and the average new home in the UK, according to the land registry. I've called it the new home, uh, homes premium. The latest numbers they've got, and these, only, these were only actually put up last week. Uh, the latest numbers they've got is back in June. These numbers come from June. So these are completions in June. So these are deals probably done back in March, April time. And you can see the difference is massive. Right now it's over 45%. Do you remember when we used to say to each other, I was saying in the industry that new homes premium was 10%. Right now it's 40 odd percent. The long run average since 2005, according to the land registry is 24%. That number has to come down. So we need to be aware of that as an industry. Uh, it's gonna have a dramatic effect on our volumes and our pricing and volumes are the really big issue that we face. All of the quoted developers uh, have actually gone to the city and given them warnings about a fall in volumes next year. I think the industry generally are looking at volumes up to 30% down on the previous year. That's gonna have a kick on in all of the associated industries and suppliers too, uh, no question about that. Um, and you know, quite aside from sales issues, the supply side issues as well actually feed into that narrative. So they're all looking at vastly reduced volumes, but you can see where volumes are at the moment. So that wonderful average that we had, if I took you back in the five years prior to COVID, 100,000 a month, 100,000 a month, 100,000 a month, 1.2 million a year. Right now you can see this is running right down here around 80,000 and if the mortgage approval numbers are to be believed, I think that's gonna drop even further before the end of the year. I still think that we will end up with a 2023 total between 900,000 and a million. The big question and the big issue, of course, is what the new home share is uh, of that market. And as far as next year is concerned, well, I believe that we've got further falls in the first quarter, probably a couple of percentage points, I would think. I think our lowest point next year is gonna be depth of winter right at the end of February. And I think that the spring recovery will be a thing. Now I'm saying that obviously, I don't know what's gonna happen externally, uh, world issues and so on, and that may well have an effect. But I, I think that if we are, have we have the same background noise that we've got right now, that we will start to see a recovery in March. The first quarter, I think we'll see further negative inflation by of around 3%. And volumes, well, I believe volumes will recover, but not to pre-pandemic levels. I think a volumes next year are gonna be much closer to 900,000 than they will be to a million. And that's a 25% fall over the long run average. That's a, a real fall. And of course, new homes under pressure, uh, the asking prices are, are, are yet to come in line. So in summary then, well, inflation numbers stayed where they were, We'll find out on the 15th where they're moving in October. MPC meets on Thursday. I think they'll hold rates. Asking prices are tumbling. Um, for the industry, we have to come in line with the market if we want to maintain volumes. This is, this is really, this is your call. Uh, but, but if we are going to maintain that market share, then we have got to come in line with the way that the market's moving. And I don't think we've done that yet. I just don't believe that we have. Uh, mortgage approvals suggest volumes are gonna stay low. That's a real worry. I am sticking with my negative inflation for this year of about minus 5% and volumes between 900,000 and a million. Crucially, I believe that the new home share this year is only gonna be around 11%. So 2% below uh, recent long run average. Uh, that's it. I've slightly overrun again. I'm sorry about that. I was determined that I was gonna be on time. Um, next time I see you is gonna be in December. Uh, I will have a suitable shirt on, a suitable Christmas shirt on. Um, huge thanks to Joan and to Hannah and James who have actually managed to get through this entire market cast without coughing. Come on, guys. Great performance. Um, and uh, we'll see you before Christmas and I'll give you a much better idea of what I think is going to happen in the first half of next year. In the meantime, have a great Halloween. See you soon.